Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we will be exploring the world through photos. Hi, my name is Gary Trainer. And my name is Ashley Roki. And this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're talking about exploring the world through photos. Um, one of the things that iPads especially allow you to do is really try to go out there. So you can go out with the device, but you can also use the device to go places. Mm -hmm. So let's start. So the first app that I found was called Sphere 360. Mm -hmm. And basically what this app allows you to do mm -hmm. is go virtually anywhere and it takes the photograph to the next level. So um, you can see there's various um, categories to choose from. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go to beautiful bridges, for example. And it will bring up several photos that people, or spheres that mm -hmm. people have made. So we'll do Venice early morning. Okay. And as you can see, as I move my iPad, mm -hmm. it looks as if I am right there right on there. the bridge. And you can go all the way, well, as far as the person makes it available to see. Mm -hmm. But this would be very nice for kids because it takes it an extra step further. It's not just like looking at a photo. It's like they're actually there. Yeah, and you can peek behind the corner kind mm -hmm. of thing. It's like, what was behind the person taking the picture? Well, I'm turning around. I can see that. I love that. And... Um, we talked a little bit, and that's something you can use when kids are making a report about a specific place. So go back to, let's go back to okay. the bridges and see what we can see. Um, Here, my birthplace is Switzerland. Let's try that. Okay. And that's in Lucerne. So you see that the um, load takes a few minutes because there's a lot of information. And all you simply up. do is move your, your iPad and you can see around the lake and around town and you can see the bridge itself where they took the picture. So that's a great way and what I love about this one is it's just the visual information. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot more. There's a location, there's the visual information, everything else the kids have to explore. So um, can you create ones? You can and I talked about how with you about how mm -hmm. this would be good for kids too create if they were on a field trip, for example, yeah. and they could share that. Um, but it is a little difficult to get used to. So if you go down here to the bottom, you have this plus mm -hmm. and the middle button, it comes up and tells you what each of these is. And so record. And to record, it has you go back to this mode. And it'll walk you through what to do as you record. So and then you, once you're in there, you can turn it back. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what you do is you have the big main circle yep. there and you follow it up to... Until it merges and then it has that white flash and that means they took that picture. And then it gives you several other places to move from there. So this would take some time mm -hmm. for... Um, students to get used to. It took me a while. Mm -hmm. I'm still not completely used to it. But and then it, you see it just enhances it and you're able to view it and share it. So we'll see what the options are for sharing. All right. And you can select a location as well up here you see. So it knows more or less where you're at. So you're go it's going to suggest some names but you can name it yourself. Yep. Okay. Are we uploading it? Yep. So you can see it does take time and right now we took only a fraction of, uh, of the picture so you will see where we took pictures it's clear and then it kind of fades away. Yep. And if you hit done here. Mm -hmm. So now it's going into the cloud mm -hmm. and then you can share it and other people can like it and uh, potentially comment. Yep. And you, it has like a favorites so you can mm -hmm. favorite different um, spheres that you look at. So I just thought this was an overall great app for it. This would be good for enhancing lessons mm -hmm. even if you were teaching about a place or for social studies especially. Yeah. So yeah. And if you are a student and you're making a presentation about a place, this might be a, a way to do that as well. So I'm looking for example at uh, Hoover Dam 
and you can see the dam in the distance here. I'll share this out there. So here it is, and I can easily imagine, here you're seeing the Hoover Dam from the bridge across, and you can see down to where the river meets and where the lake is above and the layers of uh, exposed rock where the water have been and all of that. So I can easily see a student who is presenting about Hoover Dam uh, using this as the main visual, showing, showing kids around, showing the bridge, showing the yeah. desert around and all of that, and being able to actually describe the process, describe what happens and all of that. So you can layer it. It's a very different way to do this and it's much uh, for me it's similar to being a tour guide mm -hmm. where you're right there and you're pointing at what everybody else is seeing and uh, participating in a totally different way so that's something i can see being used in a classroom whether they use something that somebody else created or as you said they go out there to the zoo or to a site out and they take these pictures and now they're sharing them mm -hmm. with parents or with classmates or whatever it may be yep. all right so this one was Sphere 360, right? Yeah. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is called Amazing World. And Amazing World is a really a, from National Geographic. And it's a series of photos that um, have no uh, written information on them that I can see. But they are fantastic photos. And the way I can see that as especially as starters of her writing. Mm -hmm. So you take a, poc a picture like the one we have in front of us, or maybe, a, um, let's try to get a different one. Uh, this one, you can see that there are fantastic photos. They're very colorful. Uh, they're very different than the things we see mm -hmm. every day. So uh, you can create wonderful stories or wonderful uh, expository writing based on the information that's in the picture. And it's another way to get daily writing done and not just write about what you did last weekend or the usual prompts we use with young children, even with older children. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's always kind of nice to give a challenge to write about something really boring, but I actually really like this rich visual information and the way that kids can interact with it. And lots of sets, there are over 500 uh, photos and you can actually enhance the picture. There's a small retina button and that increases the quality of the picture so you can get it a little bit better. But even at the raw level, that is a great photography which National Geographic is well known for. Okay, so this one is called Earth is Art mm -hmm. and it allows you to have a different looks on the Earth that you're usually not used to. So just kind of look around. mostly satellite photos. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to look at the Earth. And the difference is from the last one is? This one has text, yeah. which is very beneficial, I find. Yes. But it also great photos. Yes, so it has these awesome photos and it has text. I think some of the text is just because when you're looking at the photos, you, you often don't know anything about mm -hmm. where it's at. So uh, it's that's necessary. A, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's just nice to look at it as art. It's got nice music too. I guess it, this is just a telling you. Okay. Yeah? So it, it's the relaxed version of Earth, <laughs> which is nice. When you're looking from space, you need it to be that way. And this is the formal beginning uh, for that but you, you immediately move in and what you can see is you have different ways to even arrange the photos. So there's some text that you can but don't have to share. And then there's a guide, right? There's an interactive guide that really walks you through different aspects mm -hmm. that they've included in this. So uh, while the photos are fantastic, like Wonderful World, they actually have more of a theme going behind them yes. that you can explore. You're able to zoom in as well, yeah. which is nice. So you can look around. You see where it is on the world map. And you can zoom to a, to a degree. You mm -hmm. can zoom. I mean, it, you can't zoom all the way in right. like other apps. So this one is 
Earth, Earth is art. Is art. And last one, because we were talking about uh, photography and we, because we were talking about the world, I don't think we can do this without talking about my favorite app, which is Google Earth. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that there's such rich uh, data that is included in Google Earth that it's always worth uh, looking at if you want kids to look. And Google Earth has embedded layers and we've had problems over the last few years uh, working with Google Earth because it kept crashing because there's so much information in there and we didn't have good enough networks and we didn't have a uh, good enough, uh, I would argue, uh, engines in the iPad itself. It worked better on the computer, but it's getting better all the time. And this is a visit we're right now looking at the tip of South Africa at Cape Town. And as you zoom closer, you start picking up more details, and some of those details include photos. So what you can see as we zoom really closely, we start seeing those little squares, and those are photos from different places. And so if you click on them, uh, the photo would come up. This is a photo of a house. And you can actually see a bigger photo, so you see it in a, a spectacular detail. Now, I, wish, I kind of wished we had these sphere photos where mm -hmm. we could look around for these, but these are not those. These are simple. My guess is that in the future we will be able to do some of that as well, which will be fantastic. But you can see, uh, you know, uh, I love these, some of these scenes because when people think about Africa, this is not exactly what they have in right. mind. And we sometimes forget that Africa is a whole continent. It's got many, many different zones and many, many different scenes. So this is a way to tour and get a lot of visual information for all over the world kids and adults can upload so you can actually use the engine that Panoramio has to upload specific photos from where you are at. So if you live in a small town or even a big town, but your part of town isn't really on Google Earth, you can start uploading. So you can send kids out into the community when you're learning about community, take pictures of the community, not of people, and then share uh, share them in this way, mm -hmm. uh, a teacher would have to create an account uh, with Panoramio and upload them with an exact GPS location, which the iPad knows. The iPad always knows where you are, or if you have a phone, they know where you are, whether you like it or not. But in this case, it's actually useful because the picture is then tagged with the GPS and that can be uploaded and then we can share pictures of our own community and not just explore other communities. Mm -hmm. So this is what Google Earth knows how to do and knows how to do well. And if you're working in, a, in your area and, you, and it's loading your network, one of the things that you can do is if you press on those little lines on the top left hand side, it gives you the options of things to turn off so there's less information. So I turn off the 3D buildings and the roads and uh, if you're not interested in the ocean, the o you can turn off the ocean and the contours and the depth and all of mm -hmm. that will go away. And that allows you to have uh, access to that without crashing because there's less information layered into it. So this is Google Earth, it's a great way to uh, include some visual information. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about a few ways where we can explore the world through photos. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.